2022 and Putin is into Ukraine. Today, Relux. I'm not swearing about Putin. I'm talking about these. This little post is planned to be about bill hooks, which come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. This is a small sample of the number I've accumulated. I'm not a serious collector, but there are people who are. These are ones which I've uh, either inherited or have found to be useful. Right, start with this one, this big one. This is a Yorkshire bill hook. It's a hedge laying tool designed for fairly heavy work with a socketed half, halved, with three rivets through the socket and through the handle. Got two blades, there's a smaller version called a Staffordshire bill hook, but there are others in between. Bill hooks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, depending on the job in hand, the job they're designed for, the job they've evolved into and the individual patterns made by individual blacksmiths. So your collection, if you're into that, can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of them go back a very long way. Called bill hooks, but in certain parts of the country, depending on who you talk to, especially older people from the southeast and up into Norfolk, Suffolk, South East Anglia. My grandfather came from there and he always spoke, spoke of these as hand bills rather than bill hooks. They're not machetes and they're not weapons, although I dare say in days gone by you could put a pole handle on this and use it as a weapon. I think there are posts elsewhere on YouTube which uh, demonstrate fighting with a pole arm, also called a bill hook. Right, so this is a modern one from a firm called Bulldog. When I bought this, I bought it from a BTCV, British Trust for Conservation Volunteers Conference, because I was just starting to get into countryside management and woodland work. And basically I got the guy to sort through and find a, a, a slender one. Because you can find a lot of modern bill hooks have a really fat blade, a lot of mass in them, and they're much harder to sharpen. Get on to sharpening in a minute, perhaps. This is the other extreme and this is a little spar hook. A lot of the older hooks have makers names on them. This is a biped and it's also got a number on it which appears to be 1646 which is probably a pattern number. There used to be large catalogues with all sorts of different uh, sizes and patterns of hook. And this is made by AF Parks Birmingham. There was another firm called Parks Made in Willen Hall used to do locks and all sorts of things. Birmingham at one time was the manufacturing hub of the empire, when we had an empire. We won't go into that now. But anyway, so it's rather small, put it against that for scale, and this is basically made for making thatching spars, which are still used today, still in demand, but you need to be able to make them very fast be able to make any sort of money from them. And they basically used to hold the thatch together on the house and pin the thatch into the lars underneath. So that's a thatching hook, uh, a spar hook. This is also a spar hook. This is much older. And this is made by a firm called William Swift. Some people collect these. This is one I found at a car boot sale. When I found it, it was extremely rough and had a very worm-eaten handle that was held together with gaffer tape and I bought it for not very much money at all because you could hardly make out the maker's name and I've used this a lot and it's a very sharp little hook some people say the modern hooks the steel isn't as good as the old ones some of the really fine quality old ones have better steel let in along this edge here this handle is one I've made myself whereas this one is a machined handle and it's done on a copy and lathe so this handle is a lot newer than this hook and this is as it came to me and if you look down in here where my fingertip is you'll see that the pilot hole for the tang both these hooks have a through tang a little bit more about that in a minute 
so this can in time work loose. All through tangs go right the way through the handle and to be fitted properly the pilot hole should be fitted to the size of the tang. And that's basically done by heating the thing up, avoiding the heat going to this part of the hook, which will change the temper of the blade, because a good quality hook has had tempering work done to the blade. The blade has got to be sharp, so this area here has to be hard, but the rest of it has to be flexible enough so the whole thing won't be brittle. I don't know what this handle's made of. It may be ash, but it looks more like some kind of uh, imported timber. It's got a nice ferrule. Ferrule is basically to stop the thing from splitting. This one has a reused ferrule from a much, much larger hook. And there's a blunt centre punch has been used to hold this in place. So you beat it with the centre punch, make a hole either side, so it doesn't move. And you can see here, the way this has been fitted, this has been done what I would call properly. I could do a whole video on that, but if you look on YouTube, you'll find uh, other videos. This also has a dished washer on it. And you can see that the end of the, uh, the tang has been peened over, or riveted over, to actually hold it all together. You'll also notice that this is a nice small handle. Some handles come very large. This is a full sized hook which I do use for, for coppice work. And you can see that I've shaved it down. It was much larger. I've only got little hands for a guy and this is about right for me. You also see this is bigger and this is a Fussels Improved different maker but this one has split basically it's old gone dry and if I pull it apart let's put you down for a moment sorry about that you can see the tang running through and that's quite rusty so it may be that rust on here has swollen it it was very rusty when I got it and I basically ground it off see what I had but rust on the tang may have swollen the, the tang itself and split the thing apart you've got a hole in here in the ferrule and that reminds me to say that look for a through tang if you're buying a hook a lot of modern hooks cheaper ones are made with a half tang which is basically a spike which goes in the handle and it's secured with a rivet that runs through here they don't last very long they're basically not worth a candle power go through it for a full tang like this one and here's a handle that's halfway through being made and just for demonstration purposes I put the ferrule on what I need to do now is using a long series drill bit is drilling my pilot hole then pick the hook I want to to fit to this, heat the tang and push it through the pilot hole. The pilot hole has to come all the way through. When you're looking at old hooks, this one would seem to be another Southern Counties pattern, like these ones, but if you look at it, it's side sharpened and set up for a right-handed person. So this side is completely flat. Whereas this side has got a, uh, a chamfer on it. Compare it to this one, chamfered both sides. These are for general work, although specialised towards cutting, trimming, and cleaving and thatching spars. <coughs> Whereas this one, being side sharpened, is used for hewing. Not sure why a hewing tool, basically for cutting timber so that you take the sides off it, would be this small. But this actually does work very well as a general pattern bill hook. This again was old, rusty when I got it. And again, it's a William Swift. And you see this has been stamped twice. 
overstamped. Different people will tell you that there is variation to the stamping on these William Swifts. I've got another spar hook that came from my grandfather, which I don't use in the uh, woods for sentimental reasons, which has the crown, the WS, and also says William Swift. So, bill hooks. I did another post on using a bill hook, but they need to be sharp, and I'll do another post at another stage about sharpening. Hope that was interesting. Thank you very much.